received a question if I could say something about who determines the right of an egregore's formation and this is a very difficult subject and actually very prone also to circular reasoning um, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can um, ultimately there are two factors so one of them is that beings on every layer of consciousness are have a freedom to act as they want on that layer of consciousness so if i decide i will start an egregore here uh, there's really nothing on this layer which will directly uh, stop me or prevent me or say you cannot do that um, there is a lot of competition though and a lot of powers may disagree with me and may attack me or um, harm me in horrible ways um, but this is more you could say uh, a little bit of a, of a competition and this competition also determines that uh, egregores are generally only formed only shaped by people who have a certain amount of, uh, of power of insight of stability of capability of, of coping with adversities or dealing with challenges or have an understanding of the greater cosmos uh, so they can deal with the, the competition or actually make deals with them or ally with them use their diplomatic skill rather than brute force and this is generally how an egregore gets started either through power and this power can also come from alliances um, or through uh, diplomacy or even branching off from an existing egregore or making creating a subsidiary egregore which is being yeah, supported by a greater already existing egregore um, so it is a tricky thing to start an egregore it can be done in many different ways um, but there is of course a greater power in our case of uh, living in this solar system there are actually two greater powers who are involved one of them is the consciousness of the earth uh, which we are a manifestation of and the other one is the consciousness of the sun and the earth is a manifestation of the sun and ultimately the sun is the highest local authority it is deciding how it wants to transform the consciousness within its body and its body is our solar system including our planet so the sun is actually uh, creating impulses and these impulses create movement in our spirits so what we consider to be our choice our free will our development are ultimately uh, solar impulses the sun is working on itself and we are the agent by which it is working on itself so every thought we have every idea we have every talent we have ultimately comes from the sun um, besides these impulses from the sun which are generally very um, you could say in the now we also have a collective consciousness and this collective consciousness is stored as a part of the planetary consciousness and <coughs> the planetary consciousness is in a way trying to um, use the solar impulses to grow its structure to grow its its library its its net of connections its um, arsenal of methods of self-development its uh, variety of experiences possible on this planet um, so the planetary consciousness is also very important because it's also the foundation and we're ultimately limited by our foundation we cannot uh, even when we do receive the solar impulse it's very hard for us to manifest something which is not rooted somehow in our collective consciousness because we're limited by being human and then having therefore also access only to the limited human part of the of the collective consciousness of this world and even if we break through then we're still limited by 
the current planet we live in and the current solar system we live in. So ultimately these egregores we can um, create ourselves are ultimately exceedingly primitive egregores. But if the egregore shows some potential, uh, then it is possible for other suns to take an interest in it. And this is where the game starts to get interesting, because in a way the local egregores are all very good and nice, um, but because of their limitations, being very limited in scope with only beings involved or also very limited capabilities and very limited experience, these egregores are rather uh, boring on a cosmic scale. And uh, once a method of, uh, of development or an ideal or a vision uh, becomes cosmically accepted, uh, then you will find that different suns start cooperating and uh, they will use that agricole to inspire their people. People from that solar system or spirits from that solar system will also join in the agricole. And then it gets really interesting. These are the really uh, powerful agricores, the higher level agricores, which are not active in all solar systems, but are often active in several solar systems. And then I mean three or five solar systems. And these major agricores, they also convene, they have a council, and they have more or less uh, a set of rules by which they uh, cooperate, by which they compete with each other. Uh, because ultimately, Egregores don't want to have too much of an escalation. They don't want to uh, have mutually assured destruction like we had in the Cold War. Um, because this is in a way also how Egregores' uh, powers could annihilate each other and then there is nothing left but a wasteland, not so much a nuclear wasteland as we would have in case of a nuclear war on our planet, but an energetic spiritual wasteland of several yeah, paths of developments becoming inaccessible in the cosmos. And that would go against the very nature uh, of why the cosmos exists, why our universe exists. Um, these things have happened in the past. Um, there have been major clashes between egregores and certain yeah, parts of the cosmos have become very uh, chaotic and you could say um, very inimical to uh, spiritual growth, to spiritual development. Um, and it is very important to all remaining egregores that these uh, yeah, destructive wars, which really harm the nature and the very fabric of our universe, do not happen again. So this is a kind of a place of judgment over these agricores. Um, ultimately it is a very uh, almost democratic place. There is a, a set of common rules which they all exist to and um, when there is a conflict then these agricores convene and usually there needs to be a quorum of agricores making a certain call, a judgment call of what should or should not be done in um, a case of a conflict between two egregores or if an egregore has broken uh, the laws of uh, yeah, accepted competition. Uh, their ideas of accepted competition are very different from our human standards, our human laws. Uh, for instance, uh, in genocide is yeah, quite accepted, it's quite normal. Uh, um, so, and also annihilating, yeah, just things from the face of the earth. Uh, yeah, it's considered an extreme measure, not to be used all the time, but yeah, in some, many cases, legal. Um, and the more extreme things which are not tolerated are really the uh, destruction of for instance, a person's soul, uh, or um, forcibly removing a person uh, from another egregore, ripping them out of another egregore. Uh, these are things which still, of course, happen. Crimes happen, just like because murder and theft are illegal doesn't mean they don't happen. 
but they don't happen quite as often and you can appeal to authorities to set things right when they do happen. But on most normal matters, most local matters, it is actually the planetary consciousness and the solar consciousness which make the decisions which Egregore um, has a place on a specific planet, in a specific time frame or in a specific location. Um, so the Egregores, you could say, are a very interesting group. Um, but ultimately they have to uh, obey the local laws, the local powers, which are the, is the planetary and the solar consciousness. And the solar consciousness and the planetary consciousness are also not a part of Egregores. They have to be, in a way, very neutral, you could say, uh, to make such judgments for what is best for yeah, themselves or their bodies and all the spirits incarnated as a part of their body. Uh, you do find that um, in most solar systems it is a lot more stable. In the Earth it's really a melting pot of hundreds of egregores all striving to guide humanity and use humanity um, to create their utopias. Um, and in many other solar systems it's much more stable. You have periods of thousands of years where a small group of egregores is really the dominant ones and they're more looking for perfection for really uh, attaining greater heights than creating a very broad basis of dealing with lots of different um, uh, things. So on earth we have an enormous variety but because of the width there is also a lot less height or spiritual depth to the, uh, to the beings on our planet compared to other planets. So it's always a choice whether to, to in a way generalize or to, um, to become a really an expert on a very narrow field. And uh, in that way also the earth is very much a testing ground for many uh, newly formed agricores. They like to go here to get experience, to experiment with how to do things, how to deal with other agricores, how to cooperate with other agricores, how to form alliances. So the earth itself is a little bit like a, like a parliament. A lot of politics going on between all the different agricores, lots of shifting alliances going on. Um, so it's a very lively place, agricorally speaking compared to the rather boring agricultural places in other solar systems because here we have hundreds instead of a handful like a few dozen agricores which is common in most solar systems. Um, so we have a lot of freedom with the formation of agricores but most agricores don't get to play in the big leagues. They tend to be agricores of um, like a country, a people, uh, a nation. And of course those people can have a sense of purpose and a, also a geographical location can have a sense of purpose. And to work that way within our planet, within uh, humanity. But on the larger scale of things, humanity is you know, just a speck on the map. Uh, it's not that significant. And um, also, if you have um, ambitions to uh, continue your growth or your development into other solar systems, uh, working with greater agricores is uh, very beneficial because through that agricore you can often also petition for incarnation in other solar systems. And uh, these experiences you get from incarnating in different solar systems, they are also extremely enriching for the new solar system you go to because you bring a wealth of very interesting new impulses with you and um, acting like an ambassador from another solar system is often uh, a very honored uh, position um, within your, your new place of incarnation and also a very important role to play within the egregore 
because connecting all these different solar systems and knowledge of these different solar systems and getting all these extremely different parts of the puzzle to interact and to work together is really what creates a lot of new uh, religions and new philosophies on different worlds. So for instance if you look at uh, shamanism, if you look at the Nordic tradition, um, if you look at the Persian tradition, all these are in a way impulses coming from outside of our solar system and in a way translating themselves to a human form. And uh, this role is extremely important and many of the great holy men, prophets, messiahs are actually people who are in a part of an egregore uh, who are being sent as an ambassador to bring impulses from different yeah, solar systems to our solar system. So very valuable indeed but not easy to achieve.